Ladies and gents, welcome to TFI. This is a follow me as I go type of deal. If you want the files that I'm working on, they're free and in the public domain. Head on over to Google, type in Inventor Sample Files or File, either way, it'll find, you'll get the right link. Hit this first link and it'll take you into the Autodesk website whereby you can download the sample files relevant to the version of Inventor that you're using. I'm using 2017, so I'm using this set here, but they're pretty much all the same and the file that I'm going to be working on will be in I think, I'm pretty sure it's in every one of these downloads. Uh, download the sample files, extract them, and then what we're doing is working on the samples, this project file here, and then the rim, which click open, and then when you're in the sample files, you want to browse through uh, sample files, models, parts, rim, and then rim.ipt. That's the one we're working on uh, for this tutorial. Right. You've seen the title of the video, you know what it's about. It's not a full Inventor Studio guide. I've already done one of those for Inventor 2016. Just FYI, I'm going to be doing, upon the next release of Inventor, a full new how-to Inventor Studio guide when that releases. So if you're not subscribed already, get subscribed for a notification when that video drops. And if you don't get notifications from my channel, do what all the YouTubers tell you to do, which nobody does anyway, just hit the little bell button. Uh, next to my name, my channel name, and that'll get you a notification whenever one of my videos drops. Reet, so what's this video all about? Well, it's about depth of field, mate. It's about depth of field. It's about blurriness. Uh, I don't pretend to be a photographer, so I don't know if depth of field is the actual blurred effect. I, I don't know. And to be honest, I, I'm not entirely sure I even care. I just know that I know what to do to make it look good. So once you've got your model loaded, to get a good render, in Inventor Studio, you need to do a little bit of prep work. Not too much, not too much. This isn't a professional rendering package, but we need to do a little bit of prep. And I have already done this in other videos. For example, the Boger Balls video, which I've recently done. I've done this in that video, but I'm kind of dedicating a video to that here because it wasn't dedicated. And anyway, so once the model's up, to do a bit of prep, right, what we're going to do is turn on the shadows and we're going to turn on the uh, realistic visual style. So hit the view tab, go to visual, hit realistic, and then drop down the arrow next to shadows, turn on all shadows, and that'll start turning on like the ground shadow here, the ambient shadows. And my uh, my model's rotating smoothly because I'm using a 3D mouse. Uh, if you don't have a 3D mouse, you can press F4 on the keyboard and hold down the left mouse button, that spins it around, you can do that as well. Uh, and then what we're going to do is change the view from orthographic to perspective, because it just looks better with perspective on. It puts a bit, bit, bit of distance on the camera, so it kind of looks more realistic, whereas orthographic, everything's kind of... There's, you don't you don't understand distance. There is no distance. Everything's kind of orthographic, <laughs> hence the name. Right, back to perspective. Read. So the only thing I'm really going to do with this model is just change the textures just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Because right now, out the box, the model comes entirely chrome. So we're going to jump down or jump up to this list here. Hit the drop down arrow next to this list and make sure you've you've got Autodesk Appearance Library ticked, because that's the library that's got the most textures in. Once you've ticked that, you want to hit this little coloured wheel, spinny wheel of doom type thing up here. Then we're going to right click on Chrome Polish, which is the material that's currently being used on the model. Hit edit. And then we're just going to do a little bit of a tweak to it. Nothing too much. But I'm going to change this to semi-polished, just because I think in Inventor Studio, full polished models look a bit too much. They're a bit too reflective. So we'll change that to semi-polished. Uh, we'll leave it as Chrome. I'm happy with that. Uh, in fact, no, tell you what. No, let's change it to aluminium. A semi-polished aluminium. Uh, chrome's a, a bit a bit too blingy for my liking. And then if you want to, if you want to, you can change the tint. And what the tint does, and if I just shift the windows out of the way, the tint puts like a, a coloured tint into the alloy, but it tends to be quite overpowering. But you can do that if you want. If you do want a, a red wheel, then you can have a red wheel. But like I said, it does tend to be a bit overpowering. But if you go into the define custom colours bit, you can kind of drag it down and, and change it to be a bit less overpowering, but kind of normally is quite overpowering. So we're just going to leave it as aluminium and semi-polished. And then the only other thing I'm really going to do is change the colour of a couple of faces just to give it, just to give the, the model a bit of contrast. Because everything being the same colour is fine. It's fine because most wheels are like that, but some wheels have kind of a mixture of colour. So I'm going to click that big face there, right? And that turns it blue. That means that face is selected. I'm going to hold down control and then just zoom in so I can pick this face here. Right, which is that kind of curvy face in there. You've got to make sure you don't click the edges. If you click the edges, you kind of screw it up. So you've got to hold down Control and then select that edge, or that face even, that face, and then that face, 
and then that one there, and then that one there. Right, right click, go to properties, and we're going to change these. Drop this list down. I'm going to change these to to <laughs> to black. I think yeah, black. Just straight up, no nonsense, black. Right. I think I'll do. I think I'll do. That should that should come out all right. It's kind of a nice looking wheel. It's not the best of models actually. It's not an alloy wheel that I'd choose in a car configurator, but it's fine for as, as far as models go. It's a good looking model. And then we're going to jump over to Inventor Studio, and I'm going to show you how to do the depth of field effect and set up a nice looking render. So we're going to go into environments up here and then select Inventor Studio. Click OK, and this model, because it's a sample file, it comes preloaded with an environment, which we're just going to blow away because we're not interested in that. We're going to make our own. So we're going to select Studio Lighting Styles, and this is where you might see something different depending on what which version you're using. You might see something completely different. I can't cater for every single version of Inventor that anyone might be on. I can only cater for the most the most recent. So we're going to just ignore all these local lighting styles here. Drop down global lighting styles, and I'm going to go for photo booth. Right click on that and activate it. If you don't have photo booth, you could maybe go for something like, I don't know, grid light if that's there, or soft light, or warm light, something like that. Go for one of those. I want to tick display the scene image, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. I hit save and then done. So that gives us a nice sort of nearly white background. It's kind of grayish, but it's bright. It's bright enough for it to be kind of like a photo studio, a photo, a photo environment. Uh, and then it, it emphasizes the shadows on the ground, which is kind of why I'm doing this. And then I'm going to go into local lights and I'm just going to give it a, I'm going to give the model a headlight, which is a light coming down from the top. So we're going to select a uh, spotlight and then I'm going to zoom in to this top curved face. Now, when you move your cursor over the top curved face here, just very slowly move the mouse. And it's th this black line that you can see coming out of the of the alloy. This is the trajectory of the light. It's the direction in which the light is going to be pointing at your model. So if you were to point the model the, or the, your cursor here, you're going to have a, a, a light pointing sort of head on at the face of the wheel, which you don't really want because then what's going to happen is you're going to have a shadow cast all the way off into the distance, which won't look very good. So we want the light to sort of come down from the top. So I'm going to select a roundabout there. So that's the target for the light. And then you want to select the source of the light, which is where the light actually is. So we're just going to move the mouse up that line, sort of zoom out a little bit, and then I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it. Inventor Studio is completely random. It's crap. It really is crap. You can get something that looks good, but along the way you're fighting an uphill battle against a field of horse crap. Everything inside Inventor Studio is complete trial and error. There's no exact science to this. You can't specify what kind of light this is. You can't exclude objects from being hit by light. You can't control anything that you would normally expect to control in a, in a photo kind of rendering kind of environment. So you just make do with what you've got. I say it's crap. I still like it though. I, I do still like it. It's good for just a quick render. So we're going to pull the mouse up, click around about here. And then we're going to go into illumination and then just crank that all the way up to the top. For attenuation compensation, you can see the results of this as you drag the slide bar up. It's how much bleed there is on the spotlight. So all the way down, the light isn't bleeding to the bottom of the wheel. Whereas if you crank that all the way up to the top, you can see the light is kind of hitting more of the model. Uh, but I'm going to that's, we'll go for sort of a halfway house, maybe about there somewhere, sort of three quarters of the way along. And then if you want to, if you want to, you can put a coloured light on. If you want to give it sort of a, I don't know, like a purple hue or, I, I, I don't know, whatever you want, whatever you want. We could maybe put like a, a dark purple kind of theme, something like that. We'll see how that goes. If it looks naff, we can change it. But you can see that's give us a nice little tint on the top of the model. It might look crap. It probably will look crap, but hence trial and error. You can come back and change it if you're not happy with it. And you can tell it's going to look pretty crap pretty quickly. Click OK on that, and that's the lights set up. That's going to cast a light on at the top of the model, and that should cast us a shadow, which we can't see yet. You can't see the shadow that this light casts until you actually render it, which is a bit of a shame. But that's just, again, it's just the way it is. And then we're going to make a camera. And this makes a difference. This is where it all happens. right? This is where, this is where all the magic happens. You want to right-click on cameras, and you want to go Create Camera from View. Right, and we're going to jump into the Camera Bro environment, which is uh, it's complicated to say the least. It's complicated to achieve something pretty simple, but we'll, we'll just humor them and we'll just go with it. So <laughs> edit the Camera 1, and then we're going to select Link to View. 
and then you just want to zoom in imagine you're now looking through the well you are looking through the camera and this is where your render is going to the your, the view projection it's the view angle that you're going to look through for the final render so you're now looking through the imaginary camera that your render is going to be taken from so we're going to sort of zoom into about about there a nice angled sort of isometric type of view we don't want that ground shadow to be too angled so we can maybe move it sort of there ish I don't know about there and then what th th this and this is <laughs> eventually <laughs> this is what we're all about the depth of field so you want to take depth of field change focus limits to f-stop and then we're going to we're going to mimic the f-stop on a camera which is the aperture don't mistake that if you if you are a genius with photography this doesn't really correlate to anything that you'd you'd use in real photography because we don't know what lens we're using we'd, there isn't a lens there isn't a camera there isn't is it is it micro four thirds? Is it full frame? Is it AP? It doesn't, we, we don't know. It's complete fabrication. But what we can do is tell Inventor where we want the camera to focus on. What, what do we want to be in focus? And it, unless you know exactly how far away the model is from your camera, which you're never going to know, you, you click this little arrow here and you just point at where you want to be in focus, which is going to be somewhere around about here. We'll have the We'll have the very front of the wheel in focus. So we'll select about there. And then for the f-stop, I'm going to start with about 1.1, and then we'll come back and see how that's working out. Click OK, and then the, that's the camera there that we've just created. That's what we were targeting. Uh, that's where the focus is. And uh, well, I mean, you could go now and see what it's like, but there's one more test to do. We're just going to go back into the camera, right-click on the camera, and then edit it. And then what you want to do is just make sure that this square here because that's going to be the limits of the render. You want to make sure that your model fits within that square. That's one of the most important things. You want to make sure it's not like this or like this. You want to make sure the square is a, a, enough around your model to make sure that you're not... You don't want it to be too big either. You don't want it to be like this, because then your, your render is going to be massive. You're going to have this massive white area around your model, which is going to look stupid. So you want it to be sort of about, about there-ish. No, that'll do. Right, the other thing you need to pay attention to are these little squares here, right? This blue square here, that is the focus. That's the that that is the focus point. That's the plane that your camera is focusing on. It's a flat plane and it's intersecting through the point that I told it to intersect, which is which was about here. So because we're not looking head on to the to the alloy wheel, the focus plane is angled. And the green square here, that is the limits of the focus. So everything in between that blue square and that green square is in focus. And for me personally, that's too much. I want to I want to reduce the amount of uh, of f-stop that's being applied to this render. So I'm going to reduce this down to 0 0.5. And then you can see there it's reduced the gap between the blue and the green square. But I'm going to drop it down even further to 0 0.2. So we've got a very small amount of... Uh, of space which is going to be in focus everything else beyond the blue and green square is going to be kind of blurry and blown out and it's going to look lovely it's going to look really nice but you can see it's moved the focus plane so we can just reset that just by hitting the uh, th that button there then what they've called a set focus point and then put that back to where you want it to be about there okay that's going to look pretty good i think i hope right i'm going to click okay that's our camera setup. That's our focus plane setup. That's our f-stop setup. So we've dictated what we want in focus and what we want out of focus. And then we're going to hit render image and see what this comes out like. I, I don't know why. I don't know who did this, but the sample file has been set up to default a render to 150 pixels by 119 pixels. And that's no good to anybody. So you want to change the resolution of this image hit the drop down list and again depending on which version of inventor you're using you're going to see a different set of resolution presets if you don't have any of these high resolutions you can just type in here 1920 by 1080 and that's going to give us a nice 1080p sized render which is it's going to take longer to render because there's more pixels for it to calculate but it's going to look better it's going to be sharper it's going to be it's going to be crisper then for the camera you want to drop down this option here and select camera 1 that tells Inventor we want to render through the camera. And now that we're truly looking through the camera, if you look at this white box here, you can see we are actually clipping the bottom of the model. So I haven't got it quite right. So I need to close, go back into the camera, edit the camera again, and you can see that I, I am actually clipping the bottom of the model. So we just need to grab that and drag it just beyond the model. Click OK and go back into render image. 
and you can see now that we are we've got a good frame there now we've got the model in frame so camera one set the lighting style we're going to select photo booth which we specified before when we were in the studio lighting styles output you want to ignore that render it you want to click until satisfactory for the lighting and material accuracy if you're not entirely sure how well this is going to go and you're on a pretty poor pc you can set this to low or draft in the first instance because it might take you a while on high to get to a point where you, you know you're not happy with it but we're going to set that to high and then we're going to hit render and see how this turns out so here we go let's hit render that's going to start chugging away and you can see immediately pretty quickly on a decent enough pc that the pink light is a bit overpowering in the image so i'm immediately i immediately know i'm not happy with that so what i'm going to do is cancel the render just by hitting this little red cross here shut the shut the image down go to close on the render settings and then we're going to expand the local lights and it's this light here that's causing the pink hue that we, we specified earlier on so right click on that click edit and then go into illumination click the color swatch and then we're just going to change that to white screw it. we'll change it to white and i'll tell you what we'll just whack up the attenuation compensation all the way up to the top so we've got the brightest white light we can possibly get hit save hit done and then let's give this another shot but this time let's drop down the render resolution to 1024 by 768 just so there's less pixels to render and then let's hit go and see what happens and that should get us a nice a nice fast render it's, it's going to render quicker than it would have done at 1920 by 1080 you can see the pink the pink glow is gone we're now at white and because we have a white light it looks i just think it looks a lot nicer you've got these sort of highlights up here on the top of the alloy and that white light is cast because it's it's a bright light you've got the ground shadow here underneath the uh, underneath the alloy but you've also got this sort of background shadow which is uh, hitting the distance and the more that renders out the less noise there's going to be so that's going to look a lot better once the noise dies out and also that that's affected by the depth of field as well so as we've got less depth of field uh, you're going to see there this bit here being a bit blurrier than it is uh, around the focal plane also what i've just thought what I've just thought is when I dragged the size of the camera, uh, when we went to edit camera before and I dragged the size of this box, that's probably shifted the focus plane a little bit. Uh, it has, yeah, it's lifted the focus plane slightly off the point where I want it to focus on, which isn't too much of a big deal, but let's just shift that focus plane back. And we'll put it, we'll put it somewhere... Uh, I don't know, if I, can, if I can hit a point somewhere around here screw it let's put it there let's put the focus plane on the middle of the wheel and then click ok go back to render image and see what this one turns out like and then uh, if you if you're thinking well uh, it looks okay but it's still it's still not blurry enough for my liking well then you can just again cancel it go back into the camera settings and then lower the f-stop even further than it already is so we're at 0 0.2 if you're thinking well, it's just i mean this is obviously it's, it's quite unheard of having a uh, an f-stop of 0 0.1 in normal photography i'm assuming i don't even think cameras can go down that far but um this isn't <laughs> this isn't real <laughs> it isn't real but at 0 0.1 uh we've got we've got more of a blur i can already tell around here, out here we've got more of a blur around about here and the focus planes in the middle of the wheel there so that bit is in focus but that's going to look pretty creamy once it's finished rendering so there you go that's it that's how you do it that's how you get a nice looking blurry professional kind of looking product image using just just minimal settings very minimal a minimal amount of effort is required to get this kind of nice looking render which is just it's just good for a nice quick image your boss says i want a quick image of that thing you're working on boom get that done straight away and he's going to be pretty happy with that providing that you don't need the entire thing in focus and you just want to add a bit of just a bit of flair to it okay that'll do guys thank you very much if you like the video do hit like if you want to see the uh the full inventor studio guide for the next version of inventor again get subscribed hit the little bell button thingy next to your name for a notification on when that video comes out uh it won't be for a while i don't think the next release is due out for uh for, for a short while like i'm not allowed to talk about it or anything that's in it i'll be doing an updated version of inventor studio on that version when it comes out and uh, i'll see you in the next one Toodles.